organic pest control. Uh, it's just Connor and I today, and we had quite a few questions sent in in advance, and we will also be answering any live questions as well. And uh, yeah, we're excited to start on this topic. Hi everyone, happy Friday. <laughs> happy Friday. Happy long, happy long weekend, but I guess every weekend's a long weekend now. Exactly, exactly. Um, well, I guess let's just get started, Connor, because we have a lot of questions to cover. Okay, just a couple of things first. This is the time when you start to see pests uh, present in your garden. Tomatoes are growing beautifully. All of a sudden you start to notice some holes or spots or blotches on them. And so this is the time when all these questions come up and people come into the nursery and say, what's wrong with my tomatoes? What's wrong with my cucumbers, etc., etc." So um, it could be a myriad of things. I think Sam has some questions specific to plants. So let's start with those. Yeah, perfect. So. The first question was sent in um, by Sophie, and she has an issue with her tomatoes. She says, my tomatoes were doing great, and suddenly the bottom leaves are super dried up. It must be some kind of bug, question mark. Do you have any idea what the problem is, and do you have a product that could help? Uh, I'm gonna include a couple of these pictures here on um, as far as what it could be. Um, and it looks like it's just the bottom leaves drying up. It possibly could be a pest, but what are your thoughts on that, Connor? Uh, I'm, I'm looking at the pictures right here. It looks like there's quite a lot of damage to the leaves. It looks like there's uh, a lot of holes in them, which means they've got something eating them. Um, what normally happens at this time of year, you get to two types of caterpillars, and they are um, cabbage moss, those pretty white butterflies you see flying around. They lay little eggs, they turn into caterpillars, they do quite a lot of leaf damage to the leaves. A bigger problem is the hornworm, which is actually a moth. And they, those caterpillars get big, they're super pretty, but they're not good for your plant. What generally happens is, if they start at the bottom of the plant, they create enough damage to the leaves that they kill the leaves. Basically, the leaves don't have enough um, ce cellulose in, their, in the leaf itself to survive. So they'll get uh, brown and they'll dry up, and best to take all those off. Um, if it's not being caused by something that's eating the leaves, it could be uh, something like spider mites. Uh, spider mites tend to come out, uh, at least be, be uh, more prevalent when it's hot and dry. So you want to be keeping the top of the soil wet and wash underneath the leaves of the plant. Um, a fantastic solution if you're growing tomatoes and you're just at the you know the, maybe the first four or five weeks try to spray them once a week with neem oil and um, it has to be raw on pasteurized neem oil we buy it in bulk uh, raw and pasteurized and we um, repackage it here at the nursery but what it does is it has an active ingredient called ingredient called azadiractin and uh, neem oil is a natural oil it comes from the neem tree uh, which is mainly grown in india but it has an um, azadiractin what it does is it's an endocrine disruptor so it prevents any leaf-eating insect from either reproducing or digesting. So they die very quickly. And it, it does no harm to any of the non-leaf-eating pests, uh, butterflies, bees, ladybugs, and stuff. And if you have, it's a little bit hard to tell for sure from these pictures, but it looks like the leaves have been eaten. And what you're seeing is uh, the result of too much of the leaf being taken away then it, dry, it dries, goes brown, and the branch eventually dies. Cut all of those off um, at the bottom. And then I would start spraying immediately with neem oil to a neem oil preparation. Spray it once a week after five o'clock in the evening so that you um, are not going to burn the leaves of the plant. Uh, neem, of course, is an oil, so you don't want a, a, a wet oil on the leaf of the plant during the hot sun. Um, fantastic uh, prophylactic too. It actually prevents the damage from the start because when the eggs are laid, they can't um, hatch because they're immediately affected by the new one. Do it once a week. And um, if you have an epidemic of um, leaf damage from worms, you usually would know it's worms because there's a hole in the leaf. I think you have a leaf there with you, Sam. I do, um, yeah. These are those lovely So any, green anything worms. with holes in it like that, they are worms. That is worm, caterpillar damage. So that's part, that looks like it's a cabbage moth because so the cat, caterpillars tend to be smaller 
and um, the hornworms, they devour the leaves much faster. Um, so spray some neem oil once a week after five o'clock in the evening, and uh, mix the preparation as directed, that's with some soap and with some water to emulsify it. And if you have um, epidemic proportions of something like hornworm, if you're seeing a huge amount of leaf damage, immediately get yourself some BT. Um, I don't have it here with me, it's a Bacillus thuringiensis. It's a bacteria that almost on contact will kill any worm, leaf eating worm. It's completely organic, uh, harmless to humans. And if you need an emergency fire, to put out a fire emergency, uh, that's your guy. But I would say start with the neem, <clears throat> do it as a, as a preventive, pesticide and it's very very effective absolutely um when you you mentioned earlier wash down your plants you're when with spider mites you just meant like spray it down or are you saying yes. actually get the, the... Uh, no spray spray the plants down and you'll blow a lot of spider mites off the plant just with the hose but they're very destructive so you really do want to be neem oil the plant as well with spider mites because it's a little bit insidious. You don't see any immediate damage in the leaves, but they start to yellow um, from the bottom up and it happens very quickly. Once the yellow gets halfway up the bush, it's a goner. You probably won't be able to save it. So that's why the preventive care is very, very important. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, that's Sophie's question. Um, the next question is, is very similar. Um, it comes from Lauren Wilchok. Uh, she says, we planted our garden near end of March and all of our leafy green seedlings, lettuce, spinach, kale, bok choy, even the Brussels sprouts have been decimated by what I suspect are hungry caterpillars or other insects. We have chicken wire enclosures to protect against bigger intruders, but could you recommend a safe organic strategy or product dealing with this so we can enjoy some produce one day? Well, look, the number one thing you, you, you have to try to do is try, try to identify what's eating the plant. It could be many, many different things. But the best time to identify that is either early in the morning or at dusk, because that's when they come out of, out of meat. Now, there could be a multitude of things eating those leaves. It's a little known to people that uh, pill bugs and earwigs are very damaging to young plants, especially when you plant them from seed. <clears throat> the first leaves that come up, the coat of lead on leaves of the plant, they're not the true leaves of the plant but they're the first leaves to come up. They're very tender and tasty and uh, pill bugs and earwigs love those. So a solution for that is to get some Sluggo Plus. That's another 100% um, organic uh, pesticide solution. And it's very, very effective. Uh, like any of the pest things, you probably, you know, you want to keep an eye on pest control before things become epidemic. So go to your garden every day, have a little look around. Don't be worried if you see one or two bites out of a leaf somewhere. You know, it, it, you will always get a little bit of insect damage, but it doesn't necessarily have to be epidemic. But if you see it spreading, or then you have, must take an action very fast. Um, if you have, <laughs> there's, there's a cat's very, tail very, just came into frame there. Um, make a cameo. <laughs> uh, neem oil is also effective for um, any of the smaller, um, you know, trips are the smaller aphids that could be eating those things. It's just hard for me to know. I don't have a picture. Aphids are those tiny little white um, bugs you get on. The, they're very, very um, common on brassicas like broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, all those guys. They're deep, deep, uh, deep green, leafy greens. Um, you'll see them. They appear in clusters. Um, they're not, they don't actually eat the plant, they suck all the cellulose out of the leaves, so the leaves turn yellow, then they can't photosynthesize, they die. Um, another little known fact is the aphids are born pregnant. Isn't that a lovely idea? So they spread super fast, especially when the weather warms up. Um, so it's a little bit hard to tell, but um, you know, the neem oil uh, preparation as a preventive is a fantastic uh, way to go about it. It won't be super effective on the pill bugs or the earwigs if that's what's eating. Uh, the, the ground insects, um, peel bugs, earwigs, it's not as effective on those. That's where the Slogo Plus comes in and put that down in your beds. It comes in granules, you just sprinkle a little bit around, they're attracted to it and it's a uh, it point super case. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the next question is from Kathy. Uh, her question is regarding grapevines. Uh, it says, we have two grapes about 10 feet apart that have traded off from doing well to not doing well. 
By not doing well, the leaves are turning yellow with brown spots and a bit of crunchy edges through the, throughout the plant. They were transplanted in March from containers and we deep water once a week. I haven't tested our soil, but do you have a recommendation? Uh, a little bit tricky with transplanted grapes. Um, one of the things they do not like is a lot of water. And if you're deep watering once a week, that should be fine. Um, sign of <coughs> yellowing of the leaves is usually what they call chlorosis. So chlorosis is caused by either lack of nutrients or too much water. Um, grapes have a deep need for iron in the soil. So you might want to put some sort of iron, uh, iron based fertilizer in it. Uh, just another little caveat there is when the plants are look sick and ill, it's not the time to fertilize them. So also what may be happening is when you transplanted uh, the grapes, you may, there may have been some root disruption. Uh, they might be a little bit stressed. Uh, normally that can last a month to six weeks and then you'll see new growth. If you see new growth, you're in good shape. Um, but if you don't see new growth you know, within the six week period, you probably need to try and uh, you put some put some uh, iron in the soil. That would be uh, blood meal. Um, the other thing about transplanted grapes is you kind of have to cut them back a lot when you transplant them. You should be cutting them back to the main stem. A lot of people want to take the whole plant with all the new growth and try and transplant it somewhere else. It's hard to do that because the uh, the roots get disrupted and then the, the new leaves will all die. So a little bit hard to tell and give it a bit of time. If you don't see any results in you know six to eight weeks, you don't see any new growth, there's something wrong. Uh, keep watering in the meantime. Uh, if you're watering correctly, once a week deep watering is good. And then maybe try, if you don't see the growth in six to eight weeks, try to amend it with some iron, some blood meal, maybe a little bit of fertilizer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that uh, answer triggered a live question from Anthea saying, my persimmon tree is dropping its babies, especially when I water. Is that an iron deficiency as well? Uh, hard to know. So I'm not understanding the, the fruit drops off when you water the tree. It's it's dropping the fruits, but especially when she waters. That's what she's okay. Saying. Uh, very hard to tell. So maybe just ease back on the watering a bit. You maybe maybe water too often. What you want to do with these trees, you want deep water them. So that means you put the hose on a low drip for a couple of hours, depending on the size of the tree and then you leave it alone for a few days. We also um, just got a new product in, uh, a tree a tree ring soaker, and it's a five foot diameter that you, it's a soaker hose that will drip, drip, drip around the, the drip line of the tree, which is a great solution as well. Yeah, um, if, if you're over watering those trees, what happens is you're forcing too much water into the fruits, and they expand too quickly and they can't really handle it. It's, it's making them expand too quickly and they will drop off, especially when the when the water dissipates a little bit because then uh, it, it removes the water from the fruit a little bit so they can't hang on, they get stripped up and fall off. Yeah, yeah, so that's that one. Um, another question, we have a few questions that just got sent, to, uh, that got sent in by Mai Yi. Um, the first is, I just planted kale seedlings and after a few days in fresh soil and a new planter trowel, uh, things are already eating holes into my dinosaur kale and a few leaves have turned crispy and dry. Um, how do I prevent these pests? I saw a tiny bug burrow into the soil. So it seems like it's going to be the same answer. That sounds like a peel bug or yeah. an earwig prop. Yeah. Exactly. The peel bugs are li the little gray guys. They turn into a ball when they're threatened or if they want to get away from you and um, they disappear into the soil. But like I said earlier, anything young, like just newly planted seeds, they love those. So Slogo Plus. Yeah, exactly. And then the next question is um, a little bit is asking about companion planting. Obviously, this topic can have its whole own segment, but you know we get a lot of questions about do planting marigolds in my bed does it really help with pest control? What are some plants um, and companion planting that can help with pest control? Well, uh, it, what's interesting about the the flowers like the marigold calendula, they are beneficial insect attractors for sure, but you have to grow quite a number of them. You have to grow eight or 10 of them in a little swathe to create an attraction for the bugs. You, you, the beneficial insects aren't going to all fly over to one flower. So you have to plant a swathe of them and maybe do it somewhere near the bed so you don't have to use up the space in the bed. You could do it in a flower bed, for example, but uh, grow a lot of them. Uh, 
basil is a very effective um, you know, pest control on tomatoes. It, it, it repels a lot of pests in tomatoes because it has uh, oilage. Basil oil is very strong. They don't like it. It's repellent. Anything with a strong oil is usually repellent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then her last question um, was, my concrete and patio are also filled with these tiny bugs that I can't figure out what they are. They are so little and red or gray. I think they are springtails, but they are so small and they don't spring. They just crawl. Are they even are they even hurting anything or should they just be left alone? Uh, they seem to be coming out at night freely, but in the sun, they're not such big fans. Hard to know what they are. I mean, are you sure they're not ants? Um, if you see ants on your plants, um, what they're usually doing is harvesting an insect, um, usually aphids. And what they do is they create little aphid farms on the leaves of your plants and they suck the nectar from the aphids in return for bringing them up the plant to eat. Um, a good solution for that is to use um, some sort of uh, tangle foot. Um, it's a kind of a sticky paste you can buy. We have it here. Uh, put it on the base of the plant, around the base of the trunk of the plant or the main stem of the plant. The ants can't get up over it, so they won't be harvesting get on the tomatoes and the plants. Yeah. I've also noticed too on some night blooming jasmine we have here that the ants love to harvest um, the mealy worms as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what is your suggestion for that pest? pest? Well, actually, I had a big bunch of mealy worms, uh, mealy, mealy, bug, bugs. Mealy, mealy bugs, mm -hmm. mealy bugs in the um, in the uh, Crete myrtle tree in my garden, and we got the sprayer out and we sprayed neem oil on it uh, probably two or three times in the space of two weeks. It did a huge amount to uh, get rid of them. There's still a little bit of residue, so you kind of have to keep going at them. If they're in a plant where you, it's more accessible, it's a smaller plant, they will die on contact if you use isopropyl alcohol, which is almost impossible to buy now anywhere. But um, yeah, neem oil, just be diligent with the, with the neem oil. Do it once a week, and every three or four days if you have an infestation of mealy bugs. They're ugly things. Yeah, yeah, they are. They're not. They're not nice. Not, not, not nice at all. Um, and the next question is from Vanessa, which you kind of just covered, um, but it's regarding ants. And she says the ants love my lemon and guava trees and the aphids on them, and they take over the lawn. In November, I tried releasing ladybugs, but sadly, they all died. There seems to also be black stuff on the leaves of the lemon tree. Could this be related to aphids? Uh, you usually don't see black residue from aphids, no. Um, first of all, the ants, um, try to find out where they come from because you can set traps for them, borate traps. And um, also a good solution for ants is diatomaceous earth. Um, it's very effective. The only problem is when you wet it, it becomes inactive because what diatomaceous earth is, it's 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 pulverized fossils. So, so when they pulverize the fossils, they're, they're like micro shards of glass and they pierce the body cavities of the ants and they dehydrate and die. Um, it's very effective, but you have to be a little bit diligent um, with it. Uh, but you want to get the ants uh, away from that tree. Uh, ants are not eating your tree. They're not eating the plants. What they're doing is they're farming something, where it's meat, whether it's mealy bugs, aphids, I don't know. The black spots of the leaves, hard to tell. It could be a fungus. Um, one of the problems with, with a tree when it's not healthy, when it's struggling a little bit, it becomes very prone to any kind of disease. And you may have black spot on the leaves. The most common kind of black spot uh, is septoria, and that can be uh, beaten down with copper fungicide. This is highly effective on all types of fungicides, uh, all types of fungus, including powdery mildew, which is something that's very common now you'll see on your uh, cucumbers, on your squash, on your melons. What happens is when the nights are damp, which they have been, and the days are warm, it's almost created the perfect laboratory conditions for, for this fungus to thrive. So spray some of this on it. The neem oil will also be a preventive um, for any kind of fungus on your plants, but it's not as effective if you have an infestation in wiping out the infestation. I would use the proper fungicide if you had an infestation. Also, what we learned in our last talk with Joanna of Fruitstitute was um, 
another great solution for pest and disease for fruit trees specifically is bamboo vinegar um, because the neem oil if not used correctly can be a little bit suffocating to the leaves of the plant where the bamboo vinegar it still has that solution and um uh, what is bamboo yeah. vinegar everybody wants to know what that is <laughs> bamboo vinegar it's the it's liquid smoke is a way that you can describe it so it's um it's uh, similar to the process of biochar um but it's the every bottle that you get at fig it comes with a, a two double-sided sheet of paper of all the different it can be used from everything from a nutrient enhancer to soil sterilization depending on how much you're using of it and the dosages are all on that sheet um, it can be used for powdery mildew it can be used for aphids it can be used almost interchangeably of how you would use neem oil um, it also has other things like it's really great for um, flea and tick control on your pet pets um, it has a lot of um, really great benefits to it um, so that's another, it's another option for these things and, and fruit trees, especially, I know with fruits and fruit, they switched entirely to using bamboo vinegar, um, for, for their, pro for their clients and their projects. So that's another, another option on there. Um, what is the other, oh, and then also with the copper fungicide that we have, I want to note too that the little booklet of information on that back is quite thick and it breaks down every type of plant, every type of tree, every type of disease and tells you exactly what it can help with and the dosages and, and how and how often to use it. So it's, it's very explanatory. Um, so now that we're on the topic of trees, we've gotten um, a couple questions about avocado trees specifically, one coming from Eric uh, saying, the fuerte is being eaten by some bug at night that we can't seem to ever see at a very alarming rate. If this goes on for another week, I'm not sure if the plant will have enough leaves to self sustain, to sustain itself. The house is right next to it and it seems like pests ignore it completely. Um, I had a look at those photos actually, Eric, if you're watching, we talked a little bit. Um, it looks to me like uh, you have some sort of a, a bigger eater, like a grasshopper or locust. Um, and how you know is there's almost a saw mark on the leaf where they've bitten it off. It's not a hole like a worm, it's like somebody's chomped a big s slice of it off. And that's usually um, grasshoppers. Uh, they come through, actually, they're migrating at this time of year, they come through. I know in my bougainvillea bush, they come through and they eat almost every single leaf in the bush, and then they leave when it's all gone, and uh, the plant grows its leaves back. Okay, that doesn't help you, you have your avocado tree, you've read that. Um, what they tend to like is that the uh, most, most uh, pests, leaf-eating pests, they like the young, tender leaves. So they'll go after all the young, tender leaves, and the reason they may not be eating the other tree as much is because it doesn't have as many new leaves. Um, definitely, uh, the neem oil is very effective against uh, grasshoppers, locusts, and um, you could, you, you'd want to be sprayed probably every three days. And like I said, go out at night and see if you can identify what it is that's eating the leaves. It may be something else, but it looked to me very like it was a grasshopper type insect. Yeah, yeah, they were big, big bites. Um, Beth Caller, thank you for joining. She had a question saying, what is eating my sage plants? Can I use neem on them? I'm going to answer. It's hard for me to know what, what, but you can use neem on it. Absolutely. You can use neem on everything. <laughs> the, the sage is very prone to the cabbage moths at this time of year. So the winter sage always looks lovely. It's always nice and clean. And then once it warms up, uh, you get all these holes in it. They're usually some sort of worm, which is what, what, almost always the white cabbage moth. And uh, neem oil is very effective for that. So just spray it with neem oil and try and, like I said earlier, try and do, if you have the patience, do preventive care. Like spray once a week with neem oil. If you have the patience for it, it makes a big difference. It really helps your crops. Yeah. yeah. Um, the next question is from Leticia. Uh, and it's again about the plants. She says, hi, I recently purchased a few plants from you guys and I want to see what you would recommend for spots on the leaves of my tomato plants. 
I was planning on ordering some fertilizer, but noticed these spots in my plant that caused the leaves to be see-through. I was thinking either the bamboo vinegar or the copper fungicide, but I'm just not sure what the issue is at all in the first place. And are they spots or is it something eating through the cellulose so that you see a kind of a webbing of the, I the think plant? That's, I think that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you may have some sort of trip and that will be uh, very easily dealt with by neem oil. So neem oil those plants. Like, like I said before, do it regularly. Do it once a week for six or eight weeks and then you kind of have a well-protected plant. Yeah. Connor, can you explain what thrip is? It's a, a tiny little bug. It uh, kind of looks like it looks like some sort of fly, a tiny little fly, and maybe like a, a smaller version of a fruit, fruit fly. And uh, they'll go into the leaves, they lay their eggs, and then the, the larvae are very, very small. So they eat only a tiny layer off the leaf, and you're left with this kind of almost like spider's web of skeleton of the leaf. Um, the other question that we got here, sorry, I'm just thinking other, other pet control, pest control items that we've had questions with. Um, what, it, speaking of flies, what about fruit flies in your garden? Is that, are they just a nuisance? Are they annoying or is it something that you should be addressing? Fruit flies are usually attracted to anything rotting, fermenting. Their senses are attracted to fermentation. So what you probably have if you have a lot of fruit flies in your garden is you've got fruit that has been picked or fruit on the ground that's rotting or some sort of decaying, fermenting fruits or, or compost in, in your garden. Um, if you have um, fruit that's overripe, are on the ground, pick it all up, get rid of it all, you'll see the fruit flies. I notice the fruit flies come a lot when I have a huge crop of figs and then the figs all ripen together and there's too many to pick. That's when the birds come, they leave half a fig, it'll drop in the ground and you'll see fruit flies all over the place. As soon as I rake them off, put them away, fruit flies go away. If they're around your house or your kitchen, make a preparation with um, apple cider vinegar and a little bit of honey and put it in a, a bottle, uh, a mason jar, and they'll, they'll want to fly in and they'll drown it. We also have a fruit fly chat by Maggie's Farm Organics that works wonderfully. So yeah, Maggie's Farm, the, the three-in-one garden spray is a That's another one. good one, actually, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is a, yeah, it's a new product that we're carrying, a new line that we're carrying at FIG, and I've heard really great things about it. I use the fruit fly trap at home, and it's really, it's really nice. Uh, Connor, is there anything else you wanted to talk about as far as pests or disease? Um, any common? Um, yeah, well, look, look. One thing I've had a lot of trouble with over the years is um, spider mites. And the problem with spider mites is you you don't see them coming until they're there, and they usually appear when it's very dry, when it gets dry and hot. That's when they like it most. Now, a one telltale way to identify it is you'll see these tiny little webs at the base of your plant, which look like spider webs, and they're actually spider mite webs. And uh, once you see those, immediately uh, confront the problem because it spreads so fast. I mean, I think in the space of two weeks, I lost a, like a whole plant in the space of two weeks. And once it gets halfway up the plant, there's no way to, uh, there's no way really that the plants are gone. But it, people don't know it's so common in Southern California. It's a really common pest and a very hard one to fight because it's almost invisible. You don't know what's happening to the plant. You see holes in the leaves, you kind of have an idea what's going on. But the spider mites come fast. So, like I said, the once a week preventive care that will help a lot. Absolutely. We've gotten a couple other questions, but they're a little bit off topic. And I'd like to address them. Um, at the next session when we're talking more about organic gardening and um, harvesting and things like that. Um, but uh, that really covers most of the questions that we've gotten on our end. And unless you have something else to add, we can be wrapping up this session. I think we went through a lot there. It's a lot to absorb. Um, 
what else would I say to people is try and do your watering in the morning or in the evening. Uh, that's another important thing. Um, what else can you do? Yeah, take all like take dead leaves off a plant. If something's damaged, to take it off, take it away, um, dispose of it in the green bin instead of the compost because it may be you know disease, a fungus instead of an insect eating it. So any like damaged parts of a plant by either insect or uh, fungus diseases, I always throw them in the green bin. Yeah. Not in the compost pile. Yeah. Where you're asking it to stay around. We, um, you know, the, those little worms, they can really go crazy. And then if you get horn, tomato hornworms, those guys are nuts. And uh, I'm gardening with children at home. And so it's always a fun task to have them go caterpillar hunting in the garden and really checking on the undersides of leaves. They're not going to be hanging out on the tops of leaves. They're going to be hiding. And they're going to disguise themselves really, really well. Um, you know, if you spend, if you notice there's damage on your plant and you spend five minutes, it's very easy to find, you know, five, ten, even fifteen little worms on your, on your plant. And so a great way to involve the kids is to get them into your garden and have them hunt and squish all those little caterpillars and call it a day. It's a fun, fun Now, Sam, did you activity. tell me, did you tell me you used ultraviolet light last year, right? No, actually, um... Christy Wilhelmi of Garden Nerd, when she did a tomato chat last year in 2019, she told us that, that tomato hornworms are, um, are black light reactive. So if you wait until the night with a black light in your garden, they will glow um, like crate, like little glow worms. And then you can How much fun is that find for kids? them and cut them, cut them up. <laughs> oh, so much fun. All right. Um, oh, Rachel had a question then about that saying, um, we hunt the green worm, we pick the leaves, but how do you keep the white moths away? Well, unfortunately, the white moths are coming from those little green worms. So it's kind of a, a cycle. Well, it's, it's, oil it's the, and the, if, you, if you're neem oiling your plant once a week, what happens is the leaves absorb the as a direct. So when they lay the eggs, the eggs cannot hatch or they cannot live when they hatch. Yeah. And if those little eggs, they're super tiny little circles on the bottoms of the leaves. So just brush those off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's usually a manageable thing, you know. I mean, if you see the holes in the leaves, you know you've got a problem. So spray with neem oil and then go out there. It's much easier to find them early in the morning or at dusk is to find the, the worms, the caterpillars, because that's what they feed. Yeah, absolutely. And always underneath the leaf. They won't be sitting on top going, hi. Uh, on our website is a whole section called pest control. So it's really easy to find all of these products that we're talking about. Um, and they most, most of them have descriptions and things. So, uh, you know, feel free to check that out and add those to your next order. Cool. All right. Well, thank you, Connor. Thanks for your time. Thank you guys. Nice and to be able to talk to you all. I never get to talk to you anymore in the nursery. So it's nice to be able to talk to you remotely. Nice little session. All right. Uh, well, thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye.